Uh, we don't have any foreheads in here. I'm just kidding you. My little nephew used to say, Uncle Bud, you're, I'm just kidding you. Or well, Happy Easter. Bill Jason was practicing his violin to play a solo in church. And the noise was making the dog howl. How many of you heard of that? Yeah, music. Upstairs, Jason's dad was trying to work on his Sunday sermon. After trying to put up with the dog howling and the violin playing for 30 minutes, Jason's dad finally called down from upstairs. Jason, please. Play something the dog doesn't know. <laughs> I received a letter last week from one of our former church members who's in prison. Said, Dear Brother Bud, we taken a religious census in the jail. I know you'll be glad to know. And like everywhere else, the Baptists are in the majority in here. <laughs> I didn't write it, I just read it. <laughs> Luke chapter 24. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive this morning. Thankful to be alive and well. And thankful for another Easter time. You know what the day is. We're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. How many of you are old enough to remember a lady by the name of Dinah Washington who sang a song, What a Difference a Day Made? You remember that? Oh, I like that song. I had Peggy look that up on the <coughs> internet this week or whatever that thing she plays with and plays it for me. What a difference a day makes. 24 little hours. It's about a beautiful lady who is very lonely. And uh, all of a sudden she meets a handsome, wonderful man and it changes her life and that's what the song is about yesterday i was lonely i met this nice handsome man today life is worth living i don't know if you folks really realize but the main characters in that song was peggy and bud <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> I taught her what I was going to do, and she said, just don't sing to me. <laughs> no, I won't sing to her this morning. What a difference a day makes. That's all that's been on my mind all week. What a difference a day makes. You know, yesterday, he was, three days ago, this, this man was crucified and thrown in a shepherd. And now, three days later, he's alive. Amen, amen. What a difference that day makes when he rose from the grave. Yeah. That makes all the difference in the world. <clears throat> Would you stand with us as we read uh, Luke chapter 24, about the first 12 verses, as we honor God's word. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and of course these are two angels. And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. And then they said unto them, Why seek you the living among the dead? This angel is talking to them. 
He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And they returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to be to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then rose Peter, ran into the sepulchre, and scooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Father, help us this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And well, what a thrill it is to know that he's alive and well today. And we give you thanks for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Once a year, of course, we set aside Easter as a day to remember the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And we ought to remember that every day. But uh, what a difference a day makes, this day, when Jesus rose from the grave. We uh, use e eggs to uh, represent the Trinity. Uh, and we boil eggs, and we always did that for the kids, and of course put coloring on them and all that stuff. And we really were thinking about the Trinity of God. Um, the shell, the white, the yolk, and then we buy beautiful lilies like this and set them up in our church um, to reveal new life, new life in the Lord Jesus Christ, new life. Uh, yesterday he was dead, today he's alive. And so uh, the angel said he's not here. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is risen. And for a few minutes this morning, let's examine the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was placed in a sepulchre. <coughs> I don't know what you, you know what a sepulchre is or not, but it's nothing but a rock that's carved out. And uh, you can't dig over it. You can't dig under it. It's a rock and it was sealed by a great stone. And uh, there were guards guarding the body of Jesus 24 hours a day, 16 guards. Each one took four hours of duty each day. Four guards guarding that sepulcher all day and all night. The Bible teaches us that he, Jesus, showed himself alive after his passion or his death by many infallible or unmistakable proofs being seen of them 40 days. Jesus revealed himself to many, many people after he rose from the grave. He walked about on this earth for 40 days before he ascended to heaven to remain. So in that 40-day period of time, he revealed himself to many people. He was seen by Mary Magdalene in the garden. She looked around, saw somebody. She thought it was a gardener, but it was Jesus. And he spoke to her, and she spoke to him. And then he was seen by the women who had... Uh, seen the angel and talked with the angel. He was seen by Peter and John. The Emmaus disciples on the road to Emmaus, Jesus just appeared to them, talked with them, explained the scriptures to them, and then went home or went in their house and ate with them. Then he appeared to the disciples and Thomas wasn't there. And then eight days later, he appeared to the disciples again, and Thomas was there. And he made a believer out of Thomas. You remember 
We hear a lot about Doubting Thomas. Well, the reason we call him Doubting Thomas is because he didn't believe that Jesus had appeared to the disciples. And all of a sudden, he appears when Thomas is there. And Thomas looks at his nail prints and his side, and then he decides, my Lord and my God, this is really Jesus who rose from the grave. And then he appeared to the seven, seven of the disciples by the lake of Tiberias, which is known as the Sea of Galilee. He appeared on a mountain to the apostles and 500 brethren at one time. He appeared to the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, and Paul later on said, He was seen of me out of due time. In other words, uh, I might have been the last one to see him. He was seen by Stephen in Acts chapter 7. You remember Stephen was being stoned to death for preaching about Jesus Christ and what the Pharisees had done to him. And in his dying moment, he saw the heavens open up and he saw Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 7 says, James, who would have been the half-brother of Jesus, saw Jesus after the resurrection. John on the Isle of Patmos saw Jesus. The Bible describes how Jesus looked to John. His hair was white like wool. His eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like brass. His voice as the sound of many waters. You've been by the ocean side and you've heard the waves and the rumble of the water. Uh, that's the way the voice of God, Jesus, sounded to John. So... Jesus did rise from the grave. What a difference that day made. Now let me give you a couple, three thoughts here in finishing up. This day of the resurrection <coughs> makes a difference in our endurance. These disciples were ready to quit. Peter said, I'm just going fishing after Jesus was crucified. Other disciples that were fishermen said, well, we're going with you. And all of them just split up and uh, gave up. But after Jesus rose from the grave, what a difference this day made. I mean, they all got right with Jesus and they all reaped mission and they were all ready to serve God. And uh, most of those early disciples were crucified and killed in different manners, they went to the very gates of death for Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us that he shall, that shall, or he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. I believe with all my heart that if you have been truly born again and Jesus is your Savior, you know him as your Savior, you're not going to leave him. According to the Word of God, you can't leave him. You can't just walk off and say, I don't want anything to do with him anymore. You can't do that. I mean, you may depart for a while, but you have to come back sooner or later. One of the characteristics of a true believer is they endure. They have taken quit out of their vocabulary. As a young pastor, I used to go to pastor school. I can still remember the preacher, Jack Hiles, who headed up the school um, uh, that we went to for a week. I can remember him still saying, take quit out of your vocabulary. Never quit. Don't quit. There's no place to quit. <coughs> We truly believe that Jesus rose from the grave. I think Peggy ran um, ripped off some of the um, folders or whatever. Did you? About the napkin? And uh, you know why? When they looked in that sepulchre and, and they found this napkin that was folded 
and laid beside uh, where Jesus had laid. If you know anything about the Jewish uh, master and the servant, the servant who served the master, of course, had the napkin laid out as well as the food. And the servant waited around the corner and watched the master eat. And when the master got through eating what, he was on, what was on his plate, and he picked that napkin up and cleaned his beard and his face and just took the napkin and threw it down, the servant knew he could go in and clean up the table because his master was through. But if his master took that napkin and folded it up like it was when he sat down to eat and laid it down there, he knew his master was coming back. He wasn't finished, and he needed to leave the plate and everything alone till his master finished with the meal. Amen. The reason Jesus left that napkin folded the way it was, you know what he's saying? I'm not through. I'm coming back again one of these days. Thank God for that. He'll be back. We may be tempted to quit. Everybody is tempted to quit at some point in time. But that one day gives us hope to go on. Because he lives, we shall live also. Amen. Thank God for that promise. The day of the resurrection makes all the difference in the world. And this day makes a difference in our enthusiasm. I want you to look at these disciples after Jesus was crucified. Peter had just cursed God. He just denied the Lord three times. The other disciples were running here and there and yonder. They had all given up. And all of a sudden, after Jesus is resurrected from the grave, I mean, they get new hope. And the Bible says they had great joy. And the Bible says that they couldn't believe it at first for joy. They were so excited. They were so full of joy that they couldn't really... You mean he is risen? He is alive? He's not in the sepulcher? He's not dead? You mean Jesus is alive? Yes, he is. And the Bible says they couldn't believe it. It was so joyful until they saw him. And then the boy's joy just flooded their soul when they realized that what a difference this day had made. Jesus is alive. The Bible teaches us that two disciples were on the road to Emmaus. And after Jesus had talked with them for a while and went and ate some with them, and after his appearance was all over, his appearance to them, they said, did not our hearts burn within us? I mean, this is a resurrected God himself who came alive. And he's been talking to us. It made our hearts burn, knowing that he's alive. Spiritual heartburn. And most of us know what a physical heartburn is. But they had a spiritual heartburn. A living Savior brings great joy. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives right here. Amen. Amen. This day makes a difference in our eternity. John chapter 14, verse 3, Jesus said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now Jesus had just told the disciples, If this is not true, I would have told you so. This is the truth. I'm going to come back one of these days. I'm alive. I'm well. I'm God. I'll come back one of these days and I'll get you and I'll take you where I am and where I live and you'll get to live with me forever. As far as I'm concerned, that settles it. 
If Jesus can't do that, then I'll just go to a grave and rock there. Amen. But if he's real and he's true, as the Bible teaches us he is, I'm going to live forever. Amen. Because of that one day, what a difference that day made. He's not dead, he's alive. Amen. And because he's the first fruit, first one to die, never to die again, he's the first fruits of death then he earned the right to take me out of the grave one of these days Amen. and take me to heaven to live with him. A little boy was in a museum looking at all the, uh, the paintings and he had to look at this fellow that was looking at a painting of Jesus on the cross. That man was so interested in that painting, he was just staring at it. And this little boy was about 10 years old. He was a Christian. He walked up to the man and he said, Mr. That, that was Jesus dying on the cross. The uh, Bible teaches us that he died on the cross and paid for our sins. And the man looked down at the little boy and then he looked back at the picture. And the little boy said, Mr., that's not the end of the story. Because three days later, after they crucified him, mm. he rose from the grave. Amen. And he's alive today. Well, that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning. Amen. He's alive. Oh, you may forget most of what I say this morning. But there's one thing I want you to remember forever. What a difference. resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because he lives we'll live also amen, amen. what a blessing what a promise would you stand with us please